the NFL on EA Sports. And the question is, are you ready for some football? It's the Denver Broncos and the Pittsburgh Steelers next on Madden Football. Uh, it is a perfect Sunday afternoon, and in the Steel City, those are reserved for one thing, football, as our coverage of the NFL brings us to Akershire Stadium in Pittsburgh. Coming up, we've got a good one here in the AFC, as it'll be the Denver Broncos taking on the Pittsburgh Steelers. Here in the Steel City, I'm Brandon Gauden, joined by my partner, Charles Davis. And Charles, it doesn't matter what year it is, who the players are that are wearing the black and gold, it is never an easy assignment to come in and win here in Pittsburgh on this field. And this team always takes on the identity of this city. They're going to be tough physically, but they're also going to be tough mentally. Just three head coaches in 54 years. They've established their program. They know who they are. Good luck coming in and trying to take one from the Steelers. And then for our visitors, the Broncos, 5-12 was their record last year. One of the bigger underperforming teams in the league. Injuries to guys like Javante Williams certainly hurt. But what do you think they need to do, Charles, to turn it around? They need to build a more cohesive offensive line. They've struggled in that spot for the last couple of seasons. And a defense that's often very good has to tackle better in the open field. Elliot Fry now set to do the honors. And with the terrible towels waving wildly, we are underway from Pittsburgh. And not much happening on the return as he'll get this to about the 23. The Steelers offense set for their first possession here, and it's Kenny Pickett who will lead the way, the second-year man, Charles, from Pitt. Pickett didn't quite lead Pittsburgh to the promised land in his first season as the hometown kid and franchise quarterback, but he did impress once he got in the field. Winning seven games helped keep the vaunted streak of non-losing seasons alive in the Steel City. Now the third-year man, Najee Harris. And he'll power his way forward for about four yards there on the first down carry. Brandon, we just saw the benefits of being able to run the ball successfully. They pick up four yards on that carry. So now, if you're a play caller, you can do just about anything you want. But on the defensive side of the ball, you're scrambling a little bit. Now you're behind trying to figure out, do I need to blitz him? Do I need to pressure him? How do I gain an advantage on this snap? Now, meanwhile, here's a second down throw that's knocked away and incomplete. Anytime a ball's thrown in the middle of the field that's popped up in the air, I expect someone to catch. It doesn't matter whether it's offense or defense because there's usually a great amount of bodies in that part of the field. In this case, no one came up with it. This defense looking for an early stop. This is third down and six. From the gun, here's Pickett. And this pass broken up. Excellent coverage there on third down as that was not an easy one to hold on to. That was their first third down try of the game, and clearly something was off in the execution of that play. Good news, they've got a whole game left to clean that up and start clicking on those key third down throws. On is the punter man as he boots this one away. That's returnable now for Smith. A good return there, 17 yards. And the Broncos take over, first down and 10. Well, the Broncos offense gets set to go to work and at the helm in his second season wearing orange and blue, Russell Wilson. And similar to his nickname, Russell Wilson has a dangerous mix of skills, the ability to throw from the pocket and extend plays and throw on the run. Not to mention an absolute winner usually has his team in the playoffs competing for Super Bowl opportunities. Good starting position for the Broncos here as they come up first and 10 at the 45. Now the third year man back in healthy is Javante Williams. And a solid run here as he'll pick his way down to the 42 yard line. Solid way to start the drive, 13 yards picking up the first. That's a very nice game there, a confidence building run. Love the execution up front and the way he pressed the hole, absolutely perfect.
throwing now. Wilson on first down. And that is incomplete. He couldn't hold on through the contact. Brings up second down. When you run in the slant, timing is everything. And against that man coverage, there was no space available and incompletion as a result. Ball on the 42 as they come up second and 10. Up the middle, it's Williams. And he'll be stopped at the 35, but not before he picks up seven yards. And that was a really nice run there to bring up third and short. After the incompletion on first down, it's awfully nice to have a running back that you can hand it to and put you back in a good situation. Coming up here looking for three yards to pick up the first. They'll try and run for it. Here's Williams. And he's going to get the first down as they bring him down at the 23. Give him 11 yards that time and a new set of downs. If you make the stop there, maybe you hold him to three on this opening drive. They didn't get the stop. Yeah, a new set of downs now. Now you're worried about, just as you pointed out, not just giving up three, possibly giving up six. Let's see what they decide to do here because they've got to change up what they have been doing. It hasn't been working. Finds Dorsich out left side. It'll go down as a gain of six, and it'll be second down. Nice play call, a little bit of play action right there. If you can get those linebackers to freeze for just a split second, that's usually all the room you need in order to get it to your tight end. From the 17, here's second and four. They try the left side here with Williams. And now they're inside the 10 as he's brought down at the nine. That leads us to a first and goal. It's a pickup of eight. And that's a run that'll energize an offensive line. They'll take that one all day long. Fundamental breakdown by the defense. You've got to be able to make plays on the edge. So first and goal from the nine-yard line. They'll try and run. This is Williams. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. T.J. Watt always a disruptor there to blow that play up. Sometimes you just sit back and marvel at what he can do defensively. Speed, strength, quickness. He's the whole package. And that package just wrapped up the runner for a loss. On second down, Williams. And the stop will come inside the five at the four. 44 yards rushing for him now in the ball game. Defensively, I think they can smell a stop. Ball right around the five here brings up third. And I think what they've done is they put doubt in the minds of the offensive guys. What do we do? Because now you don't have a go-to play. Either side they pick, throwing it, running it, it won't be easy. was that good. Unfortunately for him, the coverage downfield, equally good. The kick by Moore is good. And the Broncos, the first to grace the scoreboard. It's 3 zip. So they're able to end that drive with three points in this one possession ball game. And ideally, you want to end every drive with points. Most quarterbacks would tell you, let's end it with a kick, right? A PAT, that's number one. Field goal you'll take. Punts, you really don't want to do that. In this case, they'll take the field goal and get prepared for the rest of the game. So now Fry back out following the score. He'll send this one away. And able to get this across the 20, but not much further as he's dropped at the 23-yard line. So Pittsburgh retakes the field for their second offensive possession. And on the first drive, three and out. And I know that these are professional athletes, but I would imagine sometimes you, you get the nerves at the beginning of a game still, don't you? Those don't ever go away. And typically what I've heard from guys and what I remember from playing, if you don't have nerves at the start of a game, it's not going to be a great day for you. You're not really ready to play. So finding a way to harness those nerves and not let them affect you in a negative way, that's what all the guys are looking for. 
They'll start the drive with Harris. And he'll fight forward on the straight ahead running for just a couple of yards, second down. Certainly a nice job there by the defense rallying to the football and getting him on the ground. But I think the play gets made by the defensive front because if they can't get upfield, their job is to go ahead and get low, almost get into a ball sometimes, stack things up, and make it difficult for the runner to find a hole. 3-0 after one on EA Sports. Second quarter action from Pittsburgh. It is the Steelers in control of the football. From the 24 now, here's a second and eight. Pick it. And his throw is incomplete. Well, that's a defense coordinator's got to be happy with that result. They took away all options downfield and forced the incompletion. So the failure to connect on second down, that leaves them staring up here at a third and eight. Pick it'll look to throw it here. And that's going to be incomplete. The contact there enough to jar that ball free. And it brings up fourth down. Every offense tells you they want to come out and start fast. That's not unusual at all. But this group, they've yet to get much rolling through their first two drives. It looks like they're going to have to give up the football again after this one. On fourth down, punt coming from Braden Mann. His first punt, 45 yards. This looks good as well. And the fair catch is made at about the 27-yard line. So a change of possession here on the punt. And that will come the offense as they take over. The offense getting set again. We spotlight Javante Williams, the running back. He's over 40 yards here in the second quarter. Been nice and effective for them, hasn't he? He has definitely been dependable and really shouldn't underestimate what he's getting done here because anytime you're on a pace that's going to approach 100 yards, You've really done some damage in an NFL game. And now he's looking just to add to his totals. On first and 10, it's Wilson. Short throw caught by Dulcich. And down right around the 32-yard line, four yards on the pickup. Got to give credit where it's due. Really nice defense on that play. The pitch and catch was successful, but not any run after it. From the 32-yard line now, here's a second down and six. To throw is Wilson. Same connection, Dulcich once again. And he's dropped just before the line to gain. Four-yard pickup leaves him with third and one. Completion was given up, but that's why you play zone defense, so that you can have people around the ball when it's caught, and you don't give up much run after the catch. So they just need one yard here to pick up the first down. On third and one, Wilson. And that is incomplete. The passing game not in sync here early. And now it's fourth down. Like what I see so far out of this defense because they've been showing their best coverages on third down. So far, only allowed one conversion on a handful of attempts. One area of their game plan that they've executed to perfection. Dixon, the punter, is on as he sends it away. It'll be a 39-yard punt. Give him a good 10 yards on the return. And the Steelers will go on offense here, first and 10. Pittsburgh offense making their way back out. Not only are they in search of their first score, they're in search of their first first down in this ballgame as they come up first and 10. the play fake. Here's Pickett. Open man downfield is Johnson. That's good for 28 yards. If you're running out route, it's likely you end up near the sideline. And what did we just see there? The tap. You got it. The benefits of practice. Toe tapping, foot dragging, picking it up and making sure it was a catch. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and 10. Back to throw, pick it. And the Broncos get there and take him down. 
It was Frank Clark that time who got in there to bring him down. But you could almost see his eyes light up defensively. I mean, as a linebacker, that's about as quick as you can get to a quarterback. So what did your third grade teacher teach you about straight lines, right? As soon as you have those, you take full advantage of them. He found a gap in the offensive line, got to the quarterback, and put him on the deck. Able to pick up a healthy chunk of yards, seven-yard gain, but a tough third and nine upcoming. And there we saw one of the downsides of blitzing during a rundown because sometimes you get out of your gaps. You don't fit the run quite as well because you're headed towards the ball carrier with abandon. In need of a conversion on third down. They had the big play to start the drive. Not much sense. Working out of the gun, it's Pickett. Here's Johnson with a reception. And he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. Looking to throw, pick it. That throw finds Pickens in the end zone. Touchdown, Steelers. Two yards on the touchdown there. And the Steelers have taken the lead. The touchdown all set up by the big play one snap before, but they finish it off here with a shorter completion, this time for the score. I like how they stuck with what got them there, right? The big pass play. Got the momentum going, right? That's You create it with a play like that, and you come right back with another pass play to finalize things off. Boswell good with the extra point, and that makes it a 7-3 lead. Five plays there on that drive, and it was finished off by a George Pickens touchdown grab. Well, now to kick it away after the touchdown. And Smith not going to bring it out, so it's a touchback. So the Broncos coming out now. As we eat closer and closer to intermission, Charles, remember last time out they punted. They would love to get points here, especially if this is going to be their final possession of the first half. Yeah, and this is what close games feel like because the pressure is on both sides, but sometimes the pressure is a little bit higher on the team with the slight edge because they're trying to hold on to that, trying to increase it. Let's see how this one continues. On first down, Wilson. Pass incomplete, but the flag in the backfield, and this might be a roughing call. Yeah, no question. He got to the QB late CD, and that's going to get a flag every time. Every single time. Because let's face it, the league is always going to have an emphasis on these calls. They want to take care of these quarterbacks who are in vulnerable positions when they're passing the football. After the penalty, a fresh set of downs. It's first and ten. Throwing is Wilson. Open man, he completes it to Judy. And he's able to get this one out closer to midfield across the 45. That's good, the completion there for seven yards, and it'll be second down. Off the play fake, here's Wilson. Got an open man here, and it's K.J. Hammer. He's got his first catch here before halftime, and it goes for a first down. I know you're trying not to scoreboard watch, but you only got three points. You're kind of hoping that that type of play there gives you some positive momentum going into the half. Yeah, I need to do something to get more than that three number that they have on the scoreboard right now. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. Now it's Wilson. They'll set up the screen. This is Williams. And that play went nowhere. Losing yardage. It'll be back at the 36. He was unable to shake free there. They'll cover him for a loss of a yard. It looked like the defense, they were ready for that one. Really left him almost no room to work after catching the ball. He could throw every move in the book at him. 
They were there, and they tackle him for a loss. Screenplay set up for Williams. Now the Broncos are going to call the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over 40 seconds to go in the first half. They need to get this to the 24 on third down. Off the draw, here's Williams. And this effort will not get it done. He stopped well short of the first down at the 29. Now Brett Maher for the field goal try. Made his first. This now from 46 yards away. Marr able to put this one through, and they'll get it back within a point at 7-6. to six. So the margin shrinks a bit as back-to-back -back drives here for him in with field goals. Yeah, we know no one's turning down three, especially in the first half, but you've got to finish these drives in the end zone. That's got to be a priority. Nice to have a reliable kicker, but outside of his agent, you know you'd rather him kick one-pointers instead of three-pointers. So Fry now, after the made field goal, he'll send this one away. And he'll be tackled just shy of the 25. The Steelers taking over now late in this first half. And with a one-point lead, you'd have to think they'll be looking just to get this to halftime. Just over 30 seconds to go in the half. They've got it first and 10. Here's Pickett. And that's going to be incomplete. Too tough to hold on to that one. It's second down. Well, that one was all about the defender making life difficult for the receiver. Very tough for a guy to hold on to the football through all that contact. He ends up forcing the incompletion. So now second and 10 after the incompletion on first down. Now pick it. And he wisely will throw that one away. Well, they approached this drive with a lot of confidence after their last one ended up as a touchdown. But incompletions on their first two throws has them huddling up and trying to figure out a big play here on third down to get their momentum going again. So back-to-back -back incompletions, and that has them staring at a third and ten. This time they stay on the ground. And boy, he is very close to a first down, but from where they're spotting that football, he's going to be a foot or so short. Here's Braden Mann now as he's on to punt for Pittsburgh. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. And looking up into the sun, he's able to make the fair catch inside the 20-yard line. So possession goes over here on the punt. And control of the football switching hands with very little time remaining until the half. The Broncos onto the field ready to start their next drive. And the ball backed way up. So thinking with this amount of time on the clock, probably just sit on it, and we'll see these two teams go to the lockers. Yeah, I don't think you want to overthink it in this situation. Either side of the ball. Just go ahead and finish up the half and get on out and talk about it. So we're at halftime with our score 7-6 in a tough-fought first half. As we send you down to Orlando, where Jonathan Coachman has our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. All right, Brandon, thanks very much. Welcome everyone to our brand new studios here in downtown Orlando in the EA Sports Halftime Report.
This one's been all you could hope for as an NFL fan. Just a one-point game here at halftime. This has been as much fun as you could hope for with both these teams in it to win it. All right, Coach, thanks. Yeah, both teams likely to make some changes in what's been a closely fought battle to this point. getting the football first in this second half as they trail and we are back underway and this will not be returned so the second half begins with a touchback here comes the Broncos offensive unit here as they'll have it first to begin this third quarter well Charles we saw a pretty entertaining first half close ball game remember there toward the end of the second quarter the opposition scored to take the lead now we'll see if these guys can get a score of their own to regain that lead. Yeah, they want to have that type of a response, don't they? Because they want to find a way to take control of this ball game one more time. Gauntlet's been thrown down. They want to see if they're ready to answer it. They start the second half here with Williams. And not much to speak of. Call it a one-yard gain up to the 26. Well, partner, I don't think it's any secret that any running back wants to be able to see a hole open so that he can gallop through it. But in this case, he had to slow down. There was really no hole there. And he took a big hit in order to get that one yard. The last play got just a yard. Here's second and nine from the 26. Meanwhile, Wilson's throw taken in by Sutton. He was held without a catch in the first half, but he's got one here, and he also picks up a first down. I think that's a big pickup for a first down because when you run a drag route against zone, you're sometimes asking for trouble because you might run into a defender. Yeah, well, there they ran into a first down, executed it to perfection. Now a 10th carry. Here's Williams. And he'll get it out a couple yards shy of midfield at the 48. 11 yards there, just like last play. The more football I watch, the more I want to check and see if teams are going to panic when they're down on the scoreboard. And this team has shown no signs of doing that. A lot of the time, they come out after the half, things haven't worked so well in the first go around, they want to throw the football like crazy. But the way to open up throwing the ball is to run it. And they've run it well here to start the second half. And just one yard here from the 49 to the 50. No doubt about it. A really nice job there by the defense, not allowing him to get to the perimeter. But that means your defensive ends, your outside linebackers, the guys that you pay big money to to sack the quarterback, they also have to have interest in the running game as well. And they did a nice job there of holding the point of attack and not giving ground. They run it again with Williams. Four yards on the pickup there as it'll leave him with a third and about four more for a first. Well, if you're a football guy, that's a pretty run because everyone is in sync right there. Obviously, the guy carrying the ball, but how about the people up front? Leverage, athleticism, they created some nice space for him. In search of four yards here to pick up the first down. From the gun on third down, Wilson. He'll drop this down to Williams. And they're going to have themselves another first down as the tackle's made at the Steelers' 28. 18 big yards on that one and a Denver first. It's taken a while for this offense to get going. A little creaky at the start, but they're oiled up now. A nice throw there, and they're really putting together a good drive. Now a first down carry, it's Williams. And he'll go down here right around the 23-yard line. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. Brandon, five yards on that run. Let's get back to the huddle and make sure if you're a back, you spend time with your offensive line and give them credit. Hard to move those 300-plus pounders at the line of scrimmage, and they did for a significant chunk of yardage. Williams going to get it again on second down. And he'll get it down this time to the 17. 
77 yards for him on the ground now as he has been terrific here this afternoon. That's what we were hoping to see out of Williams last season before a torn ACL four weeks in, ruined expectations that he could join the top tier of NFL running backs. That type of upside remains, though, and Denver certainly prepared to help him unlock it as he returns to full strength. And running room scarce here. He's going to be stopped in his tracks at the line of scrimmage. Cameron Hayward in on the tackle. They've called his number a lot this afternoon. You wonder how much tread is left on those tires. We certainly do, but I always think back to one of my favorite coaches in the NFL. And he used to have a meeting with his running backs every year in the offseason and say, look, as many times as you're going to carry the ball, you should be able to carry it one more time. So make sure you get in shape. And he's able to get this inside the 10 now to the 9. That'll leave him with a third and two coming up. They got eight yards there. That was a really nice job by them picking up the run blitz and detecting it and blocking it and turning it into a nice run. And a lot of times you think if you blitz a running play, you're going to smother it. But a lot of the blitzers, they come in a little bit high. They don't have great leverage, and they're easily blocked and turned to the side. So they'll get a little extra time to come up with his third down play as we play three quarters. You are watching the NFL on EA Sports. And this offense on third down today, two for five to this point. This time they face a third and two. And that is caught. Touchdown, Denver. Greg Dulcich, a nine-yard touchdown grab. And the Broncos have taken a fourth-quarter lead. I wonder if he changed anything on his play sheet or they just executed better. Because they had two previous drives that ended in field goals. Before this one, they finally were able to put into the end zone. Well, whatever he did, speaking of the offensive coordinator, might be using that formula going forward. It worked there. Yeah, it worked very well. He and his field general in pretty good sync right now to start to move the ball away. And he will get into the end zone for the two points, and that helps. That gives him a seven-point lead. Here's Fry now to send this one away. This fielded right at the goal line. And he won't quite make it to the 25. And Pittsburgh getting set to take the field. They now trail by seven after that last touchdown here in the fourth quarter. What a big spot for this offense. See if they can cobble something together on this drive. Couldn't ask for much more to this point in the second half. A gorgeous day, one score game. First and 10 here. Pick it, back to throw. Oh, tries to force it in and it's intercepted. Picked up by Pat Sertan. And he is gonna get this one back to the 20 yard line. Brandon, offensively, this has been a tough day for him. Trying to find a place to throw the football. It's been extremely difficult. I've got to give a lot of credit to the secondary, especially the corners who've had the receivers on lockdown. Denver's offense now set to go. Another important fourth quarter series coming up, that last INT helping to maintain their slim advantage. Now a man who's been busy this afternoon, it's Williams. 
And he'll get him inside the 15 down to the 14-yard line. 91 yards rushing for him now as he has been tremendous all day long. Got to figure now after getting that turnover, they're just going to be happy to keep the ball on the ground, right? This is where covering the football, taking care of the ball, all the ball security terms that have ever been used, they come into play for the guys on offense right now. Just take care of it, and they've got a good chance of ending up winning this game. Second catch for him today, and it'll wind up a first down. Had to put that ball in there with a little extra zip, but he put it right where it needed to be. Yeah, and that little extra pace that he had on the pass, that required a little extra concentration for him, didn't it? Ball can get on you pretty quick in that manner, and he handled it well and picked up the first down. Here's Wilson. Toward the end zone, but that's going to wind up incomplete. I think he's got to be careful not to force anything into coverage right there. There weren't really any throwing lanes, but the best part for him, he's got second and third down to fall back on. They come up here with another shot from the six-yard line, and it's second and goal now. Here comes Hamler on the jet sweep. And this is not going to work as planned. He's going to be met and dropped behind the line of scrimmage. It'll be a loss of a couple on the play. So now third down coming up. Well, as a wide out, when you take that handoff and you're coming around the edge, you're expecting to see nothing but empty space in front of you. But if not... Well, things can go south in a hurry, and that's exactly what we saw on that play with a loss. Now Wilson. This is caught. Touchdown, Broncos! Greg Dulcich, a beast in the red zone with his second touchdown of the game. And the Broncos have opened up a two-touchdown lead here in this fourth quarter. We talk so often about how hard it is to win in the NFL when you turn the ball over, and here a late turnover leads to a fourth-quarter touchdown and a two-score lead. And what's more important is being able to take advantage when a turnover presents itself. You've got to come up with points to make the other guy pay. They're able to do so here, and they've got a pretty good chance now of winning this football game. Extra point by Marr, up and good. And it's now 21-7. So now Fry back out following the score. He'll send this one away. And he's up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. Pittsburgh's offense now heading back out onto the field. And we'll see if they can bounce back from that last drive. In particular, if they can bounce back at the quarterback position, Charles, after throwing their first interception of the ball game. Yeah, and some guys, you know they're going to want to try and get a big play right away and take control back. Others, they're going to want to look to hit a couple shorter passes and get a little momentum back that way. But for the defense, that goal's not changing a bit. They want another pick. You're exactly right about that. In fact, you've got to watch them a little bit because in coverage, they may cut down their gaps a little bit, maybe their splits a little bit in order to try and get to the ball even faster. They hold him to only two there on the screen. It's second down. Nice job by the defense figuring that play out and holding it to a short game. But I don't think the offense is going to be daunted. They actually accomplished their goal there. Now they've got them aware that they can throw a screen at them, maybe to slow the pass rush down a little bit, and they can throw it downfield. Second down. Here's Pickett. Crossing route catch made by Johnson. This defense has certainly had an outstanding second half, haven't they? I know they just gave up a first down there and for the offense. They're hoping that that's something that they can jumpstart with and maybe start to move the ball a little bit better. But it's been tough sledding for them here the entire second half. All three timeouts plus the two-minute warning. Here's first and ten. Now here's a pass on first down that's knocked away and incomplete. Well, this at least is the right idea. I think they've got to get the tight end more involved. He had just one target in the first half, incomplete. Now incomplete here with the first target of the second half. Yeah, should not stop them at all from going back to him, though. Find him. Find him. They'll try again here. Second and ten. Pick it. He's going to throw it again. 
And that one complete downfield to Johnson. And he will be taken down, but a big play there as it comes just as we reach the two-minute warning. Two minutes left to play in this football game here on EA Sports. Here's first down. On first and ten, it's Pickett. That's caught by Johnson. And the Steelers are going to be set up with a first and goal coming up as they get him down at the six-yard line. How about the way they're moving the ball down the field? They had a big play a moment ago. Followed up with another nice one here. And before you know it, they're already looking at first and goal. Now first and goal. Here's Pickett. He'll find Najee Harris. And he gets halfway there from the six to the three on a gain of three. Well, offensively, that's the mismatch that you want. You want to force a linebacker to try and cover your back out of the backfield, out in some open space. But linebackers nowadays, they run like backs, and they take a lot of pride in covering. What a nice play he made there in the open field. Pick it. And this is intercepted, and that should do it. Picked up by Justin Simmons. And the Broncos are going to have it here at their own nine-yard line. Well, the field goals probably aren't going to cut it at this point. This was touchdown or bust, and unfortunately for them, it turned out to be bust. Yeah, they're feeling like they've got to force the issue here, maybe take some chances they wouldn't have earlier in the game. But give credit to this defense. They've really stood tall throughout, and they come up with the interception in the end zone. Now the Broncos offense, they get set to head back onto the field. And a few kneel downs should just about do it. Now defensively, they do have all three timeouts, but very little reason to use them at this point. They'll fake the jet sweep, and instead of give up the middle to Williams. Now the Steelers use the first of their three timeouts as it comes with exactly a minute to go in the football game. I have to imagine this will be on the ground as well as they come up second and seventh. Another run on second down, trying to cover up. The Steelers signal for the second of their timeouts as they get it with under a minute to go now in the football game. They'll need five on this play to move the sticks. Now carry number 20 of the game. Here's Williams. Now the Steelers going to use their third and final timeout as they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds left to go in the game. Here's Riley Dixon now, standing just outside his own goal line. Olszewski now to return. That'll go as a punt of 42, seven on the return. And they will take over first and 10. So here's Pickett and the Steelers. Down by two touchdowns, 45 seconds remaining. It's been a struggle to score all day and now they need to do it twice here late to have a chance. Now pick it. And he's left with no option here but to throw it away. Well, it's pretty difficult to summon up offense in a two-minute drill. When your guys have struggled to put points on the board all afternoon, there's an incompletion right there. The clock reading 40 seconds. Here's second and 10. Looking to throw here. Pick it. He'll get this to his tight end. That's Pat Fryermuth. 
This game just keeps evolving and changing, doesn't it? You got a tight end who can move around a lot, not necessarily using a big body on him. Sometimes you take a corner, a better cover guy, and put him on him and try and take him out of the game as we've seen in this one. You're exactly right. They've taken him out of the game. That was just his first catch. Big reason they're losing right now. But now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. Okay, I'm not quite sure how to judge that one. Maybe didn't have enough legs underneath him. Mechanics might have been off. Maybe some fatigue. That one came up short. Yeah, fourth quarter. Maybe you do start to watch as the arm there, the legs still there. This has been a tough game. Another try, second and ten now. Pick it to throw. He's going to let this go. Back of the end zone. And that's going to be incomplete. Good effort there. Trying to take a shot, but it's third down. Give it big credit for his coverage right there because when he saw the route break deep, he stayed in position to prevent a completion while avoiding any risk of a flag. A big play looming on third down. Pick it right back to the air again. One last shot at the end zone. And that will be incomplete. They were going for a consolation TD, but it was not to be. And time has run out now on this game. Well, that second half, Charles, a little bit different from the first. Not only did we have the lead change after intermission, but they were able to pitch the shutout in the second half and get an impressive victory. And what's the old expression? That's not quite how I saw it playing out in my head. You know they didn't expect this at all. As you mentioned, went into the half with the lead. Losing the game is one thing. Getting shut out in the second half, that's a surprise. So that'll do it for us, for my partner, Charles Davis, and all the hardworking men and women on our crew. I'm Brandon Gaunt. You've been watching the NFL right here on EA Sports. And with that, we say so long from Pittsburgh.